Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Silver fast. He discussed <sighs> how high the silver price is actually going to go. I try and, you know, not try and keep it on the realm and I don't get into too many price targets on the show, although I've seen 50 as a floor. But anyway, Jim, welcome on in. Uh, how are you doing there today, sir? I'm doing uh, less strange than yesterday. Um, but I'm strange. Ah, every, I'm strange every day. Um, I tell you, this is a this is a period of very high anxiety for a lot of people, including just about everybody I know, except except one guy who's got over ten million dollars worth of gold. He's not worried. Everybody else I know is worried. I mean, everybody I know is worried sick. All right, so I'm going to talk about why silver is good, why silver is cool. It's a whole lot more than just shiny. Uh, it has tremendous characteristics. Let me let me just start with something having to do with uh, Maxwell, my uh, my great source, who I'm going to get an update with uh, very very soon. He informed me that he's got a former colleague from a previous position where he was the vice president of a, of a firm and in, in a trading function. There is an ongoing meeting every week hosted by the Euro Central Bank, and it is basically a, a financial reset forum. And they're trying to iron out all the different details having to do with the monetary system that's coming up and the energy and technology system that's about to be introduced, where agreements have been made toward a proposed equilibrium price and back in May that silver equilibrium price was decided as 400 US dollars per ounce and the gold price I'm gonna focus on silver but the gold I'm gonna mention gold because of the gold silver ratio at that time versus the 400 silver they had proposed as an equilibrium gold price of 10,000 and just since May and June and July, with all the extraordinary additional monetary increases, in other words, printing money, distributing it to save the system and prevent a lot of, you know, tremendous bankruptcies, they've increased at this forum. And his friend attends it almost every week, Maxwell's friend. The new goal is 700 silver and 15,000 gold. We're talking about 25 or 22 to 1 in a ratio, which means we're going to see a three times greater relative rise in silver versus the rise in gold. Now, I like silver for a lot of reasons. Um, let, let me just continue with this energy, technology, uh, globally managed market that's coming up for silver. And I don't know how they're going to pull it off, and I don't know exactly when. But silver has a lot of tremendous characteristics. Uh, most people don't focus on its isotopes. Most people don't know what an isotope is and how it differs from an isometric exercise. I happen to know what an isotope is. It's when an unusual number of electrons and protons, no, not electrons, protons exist in the core and renders it core. different and perhaps unstable. Now, with uranium, if you get U-235, you can make an explosion, it has a big boom for it. With silver, you've got two popular isotopes, and each one, so I understand, I could be a little off on this, each one has about a 40% uh, commonality, and that's very unusual. Most, most of the time, if you get, say, a carbon isotope, it might have 2% 
or 1% for its unusual appearing isotope. Silver has two. So they, they do they do some differentials and, and it's like, you know, electronic arbitrage. And they use that fact of common did isotopes. Just, yeah. Did you just compare the isotope structure of silver to arbitrage? Yes, I did. That's right, so you that did. you... You so just you give yourself a silver trifecta. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I wanted, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to speak your language. Okay, L let me, let me go on. I got a number of different items here. Um, we have an explosion in the delivery contract volume for silver. It's like five to ten times what it was a year ago. Okay, this, this is very big. We have shutdown of major silver producing nations. I'm talking about, it's going to be a new acronym that you'll, you'll see once in a while, maybe not a lot, but it's the CAMP Latinos. It's uh, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, and Peru. A lot of their mines were shut down, which meant that their output was limited. And I, I don't want to get into the the why and wherefore that this happened, but they shut down and now they're coming back online gradually, but not not fast. Um, we've had a severe annual shortage of silver for years. And the voice told me 10 years ago, India is supplying silver in quantity in order to alleviate and prevent a global crisis in silver. So the British are behind it, absolutely. Um, China has been actively replenishing their silver stockpile that they created around the year 2000 and I think 2002 or three. Uh, they, they made a gigantic silver stockpile and it's been depleted largely, I don't know if it's completely out, but it's largely depleted. And, and for those who study uh, some older American history, uh, Franklin, no, not Franklin, Teddy Roosevelt uh, established a six billion ounce uh, silver stockpile for the United States. And that ran out about six or eight years ago. So silver is in trouble. Um, here's a funny little factor. The economic recession has been broad and powerful. It's, it's all across the globe. Uh, and, and it really started 13 years ago. We've never exited the recession since before the Lehman event. And with this recession, you have lower output of, say, zinc, tin, copper, and the byproduct is silver for a lot of that major industrial mining. So we've got some problems with the byproduct. Um, Here's something that Maxwell pointed out as a last point, and I'll make it my last point. I'm a jittery guy. I, I itch, and I, you know, I, I'm just not comfortable sitting down. Um, missiles, military missiles, whether they're defensive or offensive, use a lot of silver. He said that there is, uh, oh, I don't want to forget the squeeze. He said that there is a lot of of demand recently for the missiles that it's not just the Tomahawk cruise missile that's an antiquated inaccurate embarrassment to the US military we're talking about the S the S300 400 500 600 700 Russian missiles and we're talking about the defensive missiles like the Patriot even though they don't work if they're shot they hit the ground and they vaporize so without even hitting the mark the bad military defensive missiles still consume a lot of silver. They're not recovered. Um, Maxwell said something that really stuck with me. He said, J.P. Morgan had a gigantic lease about a year or two ago with the, the military contractors, and they're stuck. They're on the wrong side. They're being squeezed. They can't cover. They're losing a lot of money, and they're appealing for official aid to get out of their short positions for silver. I just love silver. I think it's a lot more than shiny. I've actually got a uh, a Morgan silver dollar set that's from New Orleans, the O series. And uh, it's gorgeous because it has these little marbling um, impurities, you know. 
I don't know whether they're copper or iron or what, but they're they're it's like a streak, um, and it, it's beautiful. So that's my spiel. Um, I could talk more, but really, silver, silver, how can I love you? Let me count the ways. <clears throat> That is a bumper sticker in the making. And, uh, Jim, we have five minutes left. There's a few uh, things that we need to talk about in public here. And we'll let – Jim, by the way, can you see that to your right there's a stage in the chat room where you can see your fans are quite excited right now. Um, you know, you spoke about having a Morgan ounce and – Perhaps folks watching at home, you can chat in with your thoughts if you think it's, I mean, that we simply need the Silver Willie, the Jim Willie ounce. Um, if you would like to have a silver coin minted, you know, so you can go uh, pay for your bread and how many uh, Willie ounces will that cost? Um, Jim, I think you need your own silver coin. No, I, I don't I do not do anything like that. Turd Ferguson did that and... You know, as much as I love the guy, I think people who, who bought that might have trouble selling them down the road. So you want to be standard. Oh, Jim, you want to be standard. You want to be standard, which means the Silver Eagle or the Maple Leaf. You want to be standard. You got to think about what you, how you're going to sell it, and you don't want some asshole telling you, well, what's that? Now, you want to say, this is a Silver Eagle or this is a Maple Leaf, and I want to sell it to you for top dollar. Yeah, but Jim, you're you're not thinking fourth dimensionally here because look <laughs> at all the young entrepreneurs we have. So imagine if there's someone out there that doesn't have any silver right now, but is watching and says, "Well, now maybe if I go out balance." And you've talked about it before, Jim. How when this happens, you know, someone's going to be going through the landfill. Another guy, hey, uh, it's going to be a wide chaotic market. So anyone who can provide liquidity. In fact, I plan on being one of them, so I'll provide a bid for your silver willies. <laughs> and uh, Jim, uh, one more thing, <clears throat> if we can get some audience comment. You and I have talked about this before. Um, Yara, if you would like to join us on the main stage, maybe you could chime in on this one. <clears throat> one of the things I've found exciting about what we've done here, the software is pretty darn cool. And perhaps folks at home can, uh, Type in the chat, Yara. Am I correct that the fans want Jim Willie Day? Oh yes, we. There's been a chance of Jim Willie, Jim Willie Day. I guess it's not as good a chance as I was thinking it was. But I'm, yes, I'm everybody not would take... love to have a Jim Willie Day because you okay. know, frankly, 15 minutes of Jim Willie just isn't enough. So no. if we could do a whole, a whole day of that, I think a lot of the people here who are saying yes. Um, vehemently would love to have that. And somebody uh, just, Eric, just recommended a silver jackass as the coin, which I have to where, say. Where like, are you reading at? Where are you guys reading chat, at? In the chat. I clicked on. Right. So oh, there's chat. three chat ads, on chat. one for events, one for stage, and the one we were hanging out in backstage. You guys which, one one which one do I click? Stage. Which one do I click? Stage in the middle. Yes. Okay. All right. But yes, um, we could very definitely use this same platform, which I think is great because we get to see you live and in color and uh, your amazing ways of leaning in to make points. I see well. uh, someone wants to trade his Mercury Dimes. I'll take your Mercury someone Dimes. A Willie, a Willie Hollick. I, I think like under Mercury other, Dimes. In, in other chats, that might mean something different, but in here, I get it. I like Mercury Dimes, but I, my favorite is the Morgan Silver Dollars, and I think they're going to be a very big, big saver item and, and collector item and huge profit and nice premium. The Morgan Silver Dollar, it is a tremendous coin. Anyway. I think the uh, Willie Morgan spread is going to expand, and if anyone wants to swap, I'll give you your Morgan Dollar for a Willie ounce. <laughs> and Yara, I also second what you said because, yes, 15 minutes, and now we have one minute remaining. Yeah. Obviously, is not enough time to properly discuss how in advance of Jim Willie Day, we're already talking to artists to make the Jim Willie bobblehead doll that you can have oh at home. Gosh. You know, we want to get an artist who can properly capture the chest hair, which is very important. 
And these are all I am not going to take my clothes off. I am not. You don't even have to wait <laughs> no for Jim really to discuss it because Jim <laughs> has finally agreed. He has his own booth at Silverfest. What else could we ask for? So Jim is going to stick around and answer questions uh, in his booth. Um, you can find out about making a consultation, getting the hat trick letter, or if you want to make a donation and support the great things that Jim is doing. I know he certainly appreciates that and uh, always uh, makes his fans and uh, supporters feel like they are getting uh, quite a return on that investment. Oh, so I, I give them more than what they pay for. Every consult session, I give extra time. I answer a lot of emails every day, too. It's pretty, it's uh, it's interesting. I, I got to say something. My clients and the followers are very bright people. I, I give them a lot of credit for intellectual power. Uh, I get very few stupid questions. Uh, a lot of people provide me added information. Uh, I've been getting some pretty cool information just the last couple of days. Jim, last question for you. In your opinion, when the ball is dropping at the end of 2020, what do you think the price of silver is going to be? <clears throat> oh man, I you know it, it really depends on two things. One, if, if they have a legitimate market, I, I think we're going to be looking at uh, forty something, close to fifty. If they allow this continuous naked shorting with tremendous volume, we may be stuck in the mid thirties. We may be in the low thirties. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much criminality they're going to permit. I really don't know. I mean, you, you can't say, well, I know how much crime they're going to permit, so here's going to be my forecast. I do not know how much criminality they're going to permit. I did not expect this level of naked shorting that has happened in the last six weeks. I did not expect that. So you, know, you can have all these orders, and what you're doing is you're, you're, you're really getting a lot of churning. You're, you're getting a lot of people buying at the present price. We got a... a I have a feeling something unusual is going on, Chris. I'm going to put it out there before we move to the chat room, the you know the, the Q and A session. I have a feeling that the global reset is happening right under our feet, and part of the requirements are a stable price. So they're not going to allow a big move in gold and silver for a little while, and then the doors break down. And I don't know when that time limit is, but I, I've been hearing from numerous parties, including The Voice, a few months ago. When you're ready for the reset, you'll know it's happening because things get really stable and stuck. So that that could be a factor. Well, then then the doors then the doors break down, and I'm looking forward to that. Well, Jim. I can't thank you enough for being here. And I just typed the link in golden hyphen jackass where if you want to know how Jim sees all this unfolding before it happens, you can get the hat trick letter there. You can get your consultation. And right now, uh, Jim, we're going to shift you over to your booth. We have Dr. Mark Faber coming up next to discuss. Uh, what's it, Dr. Faber? Yes, the next time silver goes to $50, will it go over? Jim, thank you again for being here, folks. Check out the Jim Willie Golden Jackass booth where you can meet Jim. Ask